It all started with a new matchmaking scheme that my friend Jared was trying to get me to try. He was tired of me moping around at home and felt as if I needed someone. Five years is a long time to stay single and not want anyone romantically, he had claimed. To be honest, I was too broke for a relationship. I was trying my hardest to climb up the corporate ladder to even think about dating anyone. But I decided to go just so that I could make him feel better. Jared signed me up for a dating service where they apparently found me the perfect match. Within a week, I had a date, but it was at a rather pricey restaurant. I couldn't afford to go, so I didn't want to. Jared would not allow me to give up, even if I wanted to. Rather, he urged me to go on the date and offered me some money to spend on it. He stated he felt he had to find me a partner because he was soon to marry my sister. I informed him that I didn't need anyone, but it was still really kind of him. I just wanted to concentrate on my work. When I got there, he was not there yet. I got a message from an unknown number, and he was telling me that he was going to be a few minutes late. But I should order something. I ordered an appetizer, the cheapest thing on the menu. A couple of minutes later, a man was standing in front of me. Xander? he asked. I looked at him and he was wearing the blue suit he told me he would be wearing. I had told him that I would be wearing red and that I had black hair. It was not that hard for us to figure out who the other person was. Yes, you must be Gregory, I said. It's nice to meet you in the flesh. I must say, you look very good. Our matchmaker did a good job, he replied with a small handsome smile. I take it you did not see my picture as well, I asked. Nope. They pride themselves on the dates being as blind as possible. Matching personalities is better, he smiled. He had a beautiful smile. His smile reached his eyes. In the dim light, they looked even more magical. Are you a regular here? I asked nervously. Yes, I am, he answered shortly. He did not seem to get what I was implying. Oh, I do not usually eat in places like this, I confessed as I nervously tapped my foot. Why is that? The cuisine here is amazing, he remarked, still the picture of innocence. Probably because I am broke, I confessed, my voice going up an octave. He regarded me for a bit. I am so sorry, I should have given you more leeway for the venue. They told me that you said you were open to all kinds of places, he laughed awkwardly. My friend completed my profile. I am so sorry about this misunderstanding. I did not want to cancel on you, but... Don't worry, I think I have enough for a meal. Oh gosh, I am already starting this off on a bad note. I felt myself fumbling. I was panicking now as I realized that I had so much time to change. I do not mind paying for the meal. To be honest, this is my first date using this app. Also, my first real date with a guy, he confessed. Are you newly out? I asked him. No, I am still in the closet. My family is very conservative. I have kept it on the download for years. I usually meet people on apps, but it is not always safe, he explained. Oh, tell me about that. There was one time I met someone who looked nothing like their pictures. They told me it was them from 20 years ago, I shared. My goodness, that must have been terrible. What about the time my date decided to help himself to my wallet, he laughed. I cringed at the words. That was embarrassing. I have had some bad experiences, but some have been good. I haven't done much dating lately, though. Just focused on my career, I shared as I started to feel more relaxed in his company. We continued to talk about our shared experiences for the rest of the night. We also got to know each other and to figure out what we wanted. He told me that he was really lonely and tired of meeting people on apps. He wanted to try meeting someone organically but safely. The matchmaker offered the most anonymity, so it was his best option. I told him that I had been single for five years. I was trying to get back in the game because my sister was getting married. She was going to be moving a bit further away to be with her fiancé, who was my friend. I told him that my friend did it for me because he just wanted me to not be so alone. As the night carried on, I could feel that there was a level of attraction there. I did not expect to be attracted to my blind date, but there was something there that just enticed me. So, what are you doing for the rest of the night? He asked. Just some Netflix and nothing more, I responded. Can I join you? He asked. 
That was when my appetizer got stuck in my throat. I did not expect him to make such a move so fast. The next thing I knew, he was behind me, helping me not to choke. You could have just told me I'm too ugly for you instead of choking. Now I feel bad, he said. I had finally stopped choking. He had me in a laughing fit right after. Order some food. It's on me, he smiled. You really don't have to, I started. Nonsense! I do not want this night to end, he responded. I blushed a little bit at his statement. You can join me if you want, I offered. I was a bit shy, even though he had been the first one to suggest this. Very well then, he grinned as he lifted his glass to toast to me. Our glasses clinked and we resumed our conversation. Later that night. Netflix and chill, huh? He asked. I blushed and buried myself in his chest. I thought I had more self-control than that, I confessed. You usually don't bring home guys luring them with chilling and then seducing them, he asked. I rolled my eyes at his joke. Not on the first date, but I had fun with you, I said. I was not lying. The whole night was perfect. After dinner, we drove back to my place, I made us some coffee, and then we watched something. We ended up turning it off and sharing our first kiss. Things quickly moved forward after that, and before we knew it, we had lost all our clothes. Normally, I would have waited until the third date, but I couldn't help but be drawn to him. I was not as stressed out when I was with him. It was the best feeling I had in a long time. Before going to bed, I would usually be aimlessly browsing the internet. Tonight, we were conversing and giggling as though we had been friends for a long time. I did not want the date to end because it was so much more than I anticipated. Two days later, What in the actual hell? I asked myself for the third time in a minute. I was in the bathroom and I was freaking out. I had just been introduced to my new boss and guess who it was? The man who was in my arms just days ago. I should have known that was why he was familiar. I scolded myself for being so stupid. That morning, I went to work feeling confident and ready to face anything. There was even a spring in my step because of the amazing weekend we had. Greg and I stayed indoors the whole weekend and enjoyed each other's company. It felt like we were in our own little bubble. Unfortunately, he had to leave on Monday morning, but he promised to text me. Before leaving, he gave me some money. He told me to use it to buy some food and anything else I needed. I refused to take the money, but he insisted. Right after he left, I went to see my sister in the apartment next to mine. She noticed that I was glowing and questioned me about my date. I did not share much because I was in a rush. I just gave her the money for my suit, which she was going to order for me. Afterward, I ran to work and made it just before the new boss arrived. Imagine my shock when I saw that it was Greg. I could not believe that I had messed up before Monday even came. At least, he had acted nonchalant when he had met me and treated me like everyone else. By saying that, I mean that he was not the nicest. He was more hardcore than my previous boss. He was not playing. I was just waiting to be called to his office and scolded. He must have thought that I planned all this. This was hilarious and not in a good way. Now it made sense when he said that he was from a conservative family. His dad was the most conservative hetero man out there. He sometimes made some jokes that were out of pocket, but we all dealt with it because he was the man who paid our salaries. If he found out about us, I was going to be in so much trouble. I was going to lose all that I had. I did not know what to do. That night, as I was settling into bed after a long day at work, there was a knock on the door. I got dressed and went to check it out. I could not believe my eyes when I saw Greg standing there. I had managed to do a good job of hiding from him while at work. I was hoping he did not recognize me in my work clothes. I am so sorry. I had no idea that you were... I started. Can I come in? He asked. He had no facial expression on his face at all, which indicated that whatever he was about to say was very serious. Yes, you may. I said as I moved to the side and he got in. We both sat on my couch and looked at each other. Thank you for not saying anything, he began as he ran his fingers through his hair. I was never going to. It's none of my business who you are. I swear I had no idea who you were when we met. I tried to explain myself. I know that, he said gently as he gave me a small smile. 
I'm not going to say anything at all, I promised him. Thank you. I came here to ask you not to say anything and to also offer you this, he said. He took an envelope out of his jacket and handed it to me. It was money, a lot of money, that I could not even count. I want you to keep my secret and carry on with our arrangement. That is $10,000 in cash, he told me. I was flabbergasted. What in the world? What? Why are you paying me? I exclaimed as I stood up. Purely for selfish reasons, I enjoyed our weekend and do not wish it to end just because I am your boss. At work, we pretend as if we do not know each other, but I want this to continue. It's your choice, though. If you do not want to, I will not force you, he said in a matter-of-fact tone. I was conflicted about what to say. This was just too much for me. You can take some time to think about it, but please take this money. Your discretion is very important to me. Thank you for not running to my dad with this information, he softly muttered. Why would I have done that, I asked. You could have used the information to get yourself a promotion, he shrugged. What kind of sick person would do that? I muttered to myself and looked down at the stack of cash in my hands. I will think about it. Thank you for the money, I said, unsure of what to do next. I have to go, but please keep this between us. Do not even tell anyone what our arrangement is if you accept, he said as he stood up to leave. I hugged him before he left. He stiffened a bit, so I let go. Sorry, habit. Because of the weekend, I confess. I felt mega embarrassed. He chuckled lightly and then made his way out. Two months later, I accepted his offer after thinking about it for a while. I was not stupid. I knew that my financial situation was terrible and it would take a miracle to fix it. This was my miracle. I just had to entertain him some days and then he could help me out financially. He was not stingy at all. He was very generous to me. Because of his generosity, my life started to improve a little bit. I was able to fix my floor, which had been creaking and giving me issues all year. I was also able to get myself some actual good food. All along, I had just been buying cheap things and surviving on noodles. Most of my money went to transport and paying off my past medical bills. By the end of the month, I would have nothing to worry about. At some point, it felt like he was finding every excuse to give me money. Like that time when he randomly sent me a pair of designer shoes. Although I do agree it was probably the result of the after I sent a very rather spicy selfie. The shoes were at my house by that evening. He told me that he was happy with our arrangement. I understood when he could not be there with me, and I did not pry into his life. He loved the discretion and loved the fact that I was not expecting much from him. He told me that with the way things were looking, he would probably get married to some heiress that his dad chose. He never planned to come out because he knew he would be disowned. It made me feel very sad when he said that. I used to be jealous of people born with a silver spoon in their mouths, but he made me think differently about it all. He made me consider that he paid for being born like that in one way or the other. I never dared to say that to him. He told me that the one thing he hated was pity. All I needed to do was make him happy, fulfill his physical needs, and help him relieve his stress. He did not like to be reminded of his dad or his family ever. A couple of days later. I knew and very well remembered that it was just going to be a transactional setting between us, but sometimes Greg did things that made it easy for me to overlook that particular part. Each time he did something, I imagined something more between us, and Greg made it so very easy for me. Sometimes by defying himself and his own claims of needing absolute secrecy in these things. In the recent times, it happened several times. I remembered the one from my office right in the den of the lion. A colleague of mine, despite being aware of my situation, had pulled in a very nasty prank on me during office hours, and Greg, the man who wanted to keep it all a secret, followed after me to the men's washroom. I know you are in there, Greg said. I did not answer. I rocked back and forth feeling sick to my stomach. I am not going to go away. What is wrong? Are you sick? He asked. Leave, I am fine, I insisted as I put my fingers over my ears one more time. I could still hear that loud sound. Please let me in, he begged. We are at work, we should not be seen together, I reminded him. The next thing I knew, the door made some sounds, and it was open. 
I looked at him in shock. What? I'm not just a pretty face, he said as he shrugged. I'm fine. No need to blow our cover. Go back to the others. It was just all the confetti and loud noises, I explained. You are afraid of loud noises, he asked. They sound like fireworks. I'm afraid of them. Adrian knew that, which is why he played that stupid prank on me. Want me to do something about it? He asked. I shook my head. Okay, come on. You are going home. You look spooked, he said. I really do not want to be alone right now. Then wait for me downstairs. I will be there to fetch you soon. I think you need some fresh air, he said. I was shocked that he would leave work and risk being seen just so that he could help me calm down. I quickly got out of the stall and straightened myself up, then I went downstairs. He took me to a beach not so far from work. We just sat there, listening to the waves and lost in our own thoughts. He somehow knew that I did not want to speak. Two days later, I had managed to keep the arrangement away from my sister and Jared for a while, but I got sloppy. They both caught on and then cornered me. I got home from work one day went to my sister's apartment, and found the two of them there with a package. It was opened. As soon as I got in, my sister said, So now you're selling your body? Oh dear. My sister was not happy with me. She was not talking to me. She had forced me to explain the situation with Greg, and she did not like it. She felt as if I deserved more than that. Try as I might to tell her that this was working for me, she did not accept it. This is dangerous for both of you. What happens when his parents find out about this? They're going to ruin your life. We cannot afford to let you lose your job. All that money he is giving you is going to finish up at some point, she chided. I thought you wanted love. This is only going to break your heart. Do you think he is going to suddenly wake up and shun his family for you, and then you two can live happily ever after? Jared chimed in. Look. This is merely business with a bit of pleasure on the side. You should be happy for me. I'm not alone anymore, I shouted. We argued for hours about this, but we could not come to a conclusion. You two did not question me when I bought you all those gifts. You were blissfully ignorant and now you want to complain? Now that I told you where I got that money, you have a problem with it? You are accusing me of selling my body. What we have is a mutually beneficial relationship. They were both silent, looked at each other. What is that supposed to mean? They exclaimed in unison. You were literally childhood friends who fell in love with each other and are going to get married, have kids, and all those nice things. Things are not so easy for me, okay? Have you ever considered that I am okay with not loving? That this is perfectly fine for me and it makes me happy? I asked. It was a lie, I knew. I had started to imagine things between Greg and me, and that is precisely why it was hard to convince them of something that I knew was a lie. But losing this arrangement with Greg wasn't an option either. And so, despite my sister's hatred for this setting, I continued it with Greg, ready to get my heart broken at the first chance. Two days later, Greg was looking behind himself and my sister, who'd just left. Hey, I said, and opened the door for him. What are you looking at? He pointed at my sister. What's up with the angry lady? Never mind her, that is my sister, I said. Why was she looking at me like that? He asked apprehensively. He came to join me on the couch and pulled the blanket to him. I felt the lump in my throat. I contemplated telling him the truth or distracting him. I remembered our terms that no one had to know. Don't worry about it, I tried to change the subject. You have those worry lines again, he pointed out and then he smoothed out my forehead. We shared a brief moment of eye contact. We did not say anything, just looked at each other. I felt a sharp feeling going through my heart, which I would not explain. I told her about us. She managed to get a hold of one of the gifts you sent me, I confessed after turning the idea over in my mind. He was silent for a while, looking into my eyes. Will she say anything to anyone? Is she blackmailing you? Must I pay her off? His voice started to sound panicked. No, she will not say anything. She is just protective of me. I told her what we were. And what are we? He mused, lightly caressing my cheek. Mutually beneficial. No feelings, I said flatly. He smiled grimly for a moment, and then he told me that he had something for me. 
Guess who got you a week off at work paid? He said excitedly. What? I shouted, unsure how to react properly. We are going on a getaway, baby. He matched my energy and then he pulled me in for a kiss. I could not get rid of the smile on my face. Two weeks later. Hey, I'm sorry that I cannot make our weekend getaway. Dad wants me to meet the daughter of his friend. A text came through from Greg. I had just finished packing up and was ready to catch my flight out of town. There was a resort he had been wanting to take me to for a while. He said that it was something very important to him when he was a child. He said it reminded him a lot of childhood innocence when things were not going well. He said that he went to that resort every single time he felt a bit lost. His dad was stressing him and he wanted to go with me there. I had been very flattered that he would do that with me. It was one of the small things about his life that he allowed me to see. I could tell that from the few things he told me that he had often felt like he could not be himself with his family. He had grown up with siblings who were gunning for his title from the time his dad announced he would be taking over the company. He told me that if any of them ever got wind of us, he would most likely lose everything. I felt like his little secret, but not in a bad way. I felt like I was his to protect, the one person who got the true him that he was too afraid to show the real world. But I did not forget what my sister said about protecting my heart. I knew this was purely transactional. What I was getting out of this was the money, the luxury, and the glimpse into a life I never had. One day, he was going to tell me it was going to be over. By then, I hoped to have saved enough to better my situation. That was what was important for me. Making a life for myself where I was not at the bottom of the food chain would make me happy. My sister did not understand me at all. She was content with true love and settling down. What I wanted was to not live in the dust anymore. I wanted to see the world, experience different things, and be so much more. I wanted to not be overlooked and to be respected. Unfortunately, money was the only thing that could do that. My thoughts were disturbed by an incoming message. You can still go. I will join you tomorrow, he said. He told me that the resort was discreet. No one knew who he was or cared. He and I would have as much privacy as needed there. Since I was already packed, I made my way to the resort in a timely manner. The next day. I am outside, a text came through on my phone. I smiled and then skipped all the way to the door revealing him. I could not believe what I had discovered the previous night. Maybe after all, it was him. From what I discovered last night, through sheer luck, was that our history went back to our early teenage years. Years ago when I was younger and dumber, I'd met Greg right here for the first time, and it wasn't the start of a blooming friendship, but rather a romance. We shared a kiss. Maybe it was him I wanted and not his money. We need to talk, I said as soon as I opened the door. Yes, we do, but for now, there is something that we need to get out of the way, he said. He smiled and closed the door behind him. I walked up to him, put his hands over the door, and kissed him deeply. It had been over two weeks since we last saw each other because he had been busy with work. I could never admit it to anyone, but I actually missed his frequent texts and visits. They had become a huge part of my routine, and not having them had made me sad. This confused me because he did not stall in supporting me financially. I should have been happy about all the free time I had, but I could not find a way to fill it. My idle mind started to wander as I thought of how much I missed his company. I could talk to him about anything and I never felt dumb at all. I loved the way that he would occasionally caress my cheek or play with my hair. It helped to ease some of my stress. I loved that he kissed me on my forehead to say sorry for every time he had to be mean to me at work. He would call me a good boy and tell me that I mattered. I hated that sometimes I would wake up in the middle of the night and check the side of my bed and realize that he was not there. It was an emptiness I could not explain. Now he was in front of me and I could not tell why my heart was suddenly beating so much. It did not matter. I probably just missed his body. We had a reunion and then shortly afterward we ordered in. We then had some food while he told me how his week went. He said he had something important to tell me, but I was too impatient with my own news. 
I think I knew you when we were kids, I said. What? You and your mom came here the summer you were 15, right? I once came here too. We hung out a lot. One day we shared a kiss, I reminded him, a little excitedly, now that he seemed to be catching up on the history too. How the hell do you know it was me? My goodness, Jimmy? He asked. I shook my head. I stopped going by my middle name when my mom passed, I said. You were my first kiss. Every year I would come back and hoped you were here. Why did you never come back? My parents passed away and there wasn't anyone to bring us back here, I confessed a little sadly. Damn, this is crazy, he said. He held my hand and smiled. For a moment there was warmth between us. I could have stayed in that moment forever. What was it that you wanted to tell me? I asked. Nothing at all. Let us just enjoy this moment, he said. A week and a half later. I was at Greg's place, and why? I couldn't tell. There was a gnawing feeling in my chest after his absence in the past few days. I hadn't seen him, and I was growing worried. When I couldn't hold it any longer, I found my way to his home, and now I was here, waiting for him to open the door. He was giving me short replies over text with no explanations. What are you doing here? He asked when he opened the door. He was soaked in what looked like sweat. As he moved to let me in, I saw that he was shivering. Are you sick? Why did you not go to the doctor? I asked. I, I'm scared of doctors, he revealed. I tutted as I closed the door behind me and made my way to the kitchen. How did you know where to find me? He asked. I asked around at work because I needed to give you some files, I lied. I had no files to give him. I was worried about him. It does not matter how I found you. I'm going to take care of you right now. You will follow all of my instructions, right? I raised an eyebrow as I asked. Gosh, yes, Dad, he rolled his eyes. I spent the night at his house nursing him back to health. I was back the next few evenings to check up on him. Seeing him so vulnerable like that tugged at my heart. It hurt me to see him so weak. I had no choice but to admit to myself that I was falling. A month later. That day changed everything for us. I realized that I felt so much more for him than loving what he could do for me. Some sort of barrier opened up between us and I realized that maybe my sister was right. Maybe I had put myself in danger of falling in love. It was fine. I would keep it to myself so that he would never know. That is what I told myself. Alas, fate had other plans for us. During the trip, when he had come in to tell me something, I had interrupted him and that was my fault. It was that he was now betrothed to a woman. I found out through a newspaper announcement less than two weeks after our time at the resort. I dared not say a word to him. It was to be expected. Things were going to be different, but I could carry on as long as I had him. I was sure that I could keep my flame contained. He would never know how I felt because he would never be truly mine. I was okay with that. What I was not okay with was the way he had left me soon afterward. He could not even face me. All he could do was send a letter like a coward. He said that one of his siblings had been looking into his finances, trying to find a way to take what was his. He found out that his sibling had someone follow him. He was worried that someday they'd catch him with me. He said that he enjoyed our time together because it made him feel like an alternate future was possible. A future where he could return the feelings I had for him. He wished he could have said something to tell me that my loving him for being himself had absolutely floored him. Unfortunately, he was not ready to come out. He needed me to resign. He had gotten me a position in another company which paid better. He needed me to run to protect myself. He said that if anything ever happened to me, he would never forgive himself. Greg had let his family take away so much in his life, he could never let them take away someone that meant so much to him. He apologized for being a coward and wished that we would meet in another way. That was the last time I heard from him. I sent him my resignation, which was promptly accepted. I sent someone to fetch my stuff at the office so that I would not have to see him. I was angry with him, but I understood. I could not force someone to do something they were not ready for. At least we would always have that one last summer at the resort where our younger selves first crossed paths. Two days later. As I was finishing up taking some paintings I bought for the apartment, there was a knock at the door. I went to open it and it was greeted by my sister. 
She was holding a basket which contained some food and drinks. Sis, you could have told me that you were coming. The house is a mess, I laughed. I live right next door. You should expect me here any time. Sorry, I've been scarce lately. The wedding is in less than two months. I just wanted to come and cheer you up, she said as she handed the basket to me. What are you talking about? I tried to act nonchalant. I know that Greg is getting married. It is all anyone is speaking about lately, she said softly, ran a hand through my hair. Yeah, well, it doesn't matter, I replied and tried to distract myself from her unwavering gaze. You have changed your job. That guy has not been around. Did you end your arrangement? Are you okay, she asked. Yes, it was just an arrangement, I said softly as I tried to smile. She looked at me like she did not believe me. That was enough for me to come undone. You were right. I got my heart involved for no reason. Gosh, I am so stupid, I sighed. She surprised me by bringing me in for a tight hug. You are not stupid at all. Being in love is not stupid. I am here for you if you need anything, okay, she said. I nodded and allowed her to get into the house. Shortly after my sister got married, I moved out of that apartment and rented it out. My new job was just out of town. I got myself a place there and moved on with my life. Knowing that my heart could love to such an extent was a bit of a relief. I told myself that one day I too would meet someone like my sister did and fall in love. She had been right all along. Sometimes love is worth more than money. Or maybe, before all of that could happen, Greg would return to me. The End If given the choice, what would you choose between love and money? Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing to become part of our Rainbow Force, and stay wholesome.